Executive Chef Joseph Schutze. Welcome to our kitchen. I'd like to thank our friend John back in the Motor City for his request today. Salmon Wellington. Very much like the traditional beef Wellington, it does contain the mushrooms, the spinach, and wrapped in puff pastry. It may sound a little difficult, but it really isn't. Join me now and I'll show you how easy it really can be. The salmon that I've chosen is an Atlantic salmon from Verlasso Farms down in Patagonia. I do purchase mine with the skin on and boneless. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that there are no bones in there. Pin bones can hide sometimes. Just rub your fingers down the seam there. It looks fine to me. feels fine. Um, after that, we're going to want to remove the skin from it, as the skin will not be needed for this application. And how we'll do it is we'll take our knife and make a reverse cut back towards your hand and working away this way. Getting the knife as level as possible and just kind of straight back and forth, gentle motions and pulling on to the skin. And there we have it. So now that we have the skin removed from the salmon, you want to trim up the edges a little bit. We want to make it nice and square. So when you're making it and you slice it open after it's baked, it looks really neat and uh, orderly. So I trim a little bit of belly and off the top side as well, squaring up all edges. Don't worry about it. It may look like a lot of waste, but it's actually it's not going to be. We're going to be using this for the mushroom mousse to help bind the filling together as the mushroom will tend to fall apart. And now that we have our piece squared up, we're going to cut it in half into two portions. The reason is the puff pastry that I purchased is from the retail store and they are significantly smaller than the ones we purchase in the professional kitchen. Right now we have the portion salmon in the cooler. And our next step is to make the mushroom mousse. We are gonna use the same technique as we did when making the seafood sausage in a previous episode. The first thing I wanna do is start with our cooked mushrooms. The mushrooms I have seasoned with savory, parsley, garlic, salt, and oil. I'm only going to use about half of these because I'm going to puree these or pulverize these into what's called mushroom duck cell. Periodically we will need to scrape down the sides and I'm looking to get this pretty fine. Now that we have it nice and fine and smooth, we are going to add our salmon. And the salmon, we're gonna, we're gonna process it again. This is gonna help be the binding agent that holds all this together. You can notice a significant difference from the addition of the salmon. Everything tightened up. So now we're going to add our egg whites. This is two egg whites. Give it another blast. And now our mushroom mousse is ready. We are gonna fold this into the pieces of mushrooms that we have here. Some of them are quartered, some of them sliced. And now we just mix together. I like the larger pieces in it because it helps give a little more character. We're now ready for our assembly. Remove the salmon from the cooler and the first thing I want to do is I want to season it. So I'll begin with the flesh side up. There 
And then I'm adding fennel pollen, some sea salt, and then I'll flip over to the skin side. The reason I do it this way is simply because when I'm doing the assembly, you're assembling this thing upside down. And as you're looking at the fish, obviously the flesh side's a lot more desirable to look at than the skin side. So now that we have it seasoned, we are going to move on to step one, our puff pastry. It's laying out on a floured board. I like to give it a quick roll, just extend it a little bit. Out of four directions. And puff pastry, when you're working with it, it can be challenging. My recommendation is you remove it from the freezer only when you need it. Uh, pull it out for about 30 minutes. Once it thaws, then go ahead and put it into the refrigerator to keep it chilled. It's a balancing act. You want it cold enough that it's not super soft, yet you don't want it too cold that it's too stiff to work with and cracks for you. Uh, just practice comes with it. Now we're going to move on to the spinach. The spinach was sauteed in olive oil with salt, pepper, and garlic. I put it into cheesecloth and squeeze it to get out all of the excess water. We're then going to layer the spinach out like so. And I'm laying it to mimic, to have the shape as the piece of salmon. A little extra is no big deal. Tuck a little under. Throw a little piece off for the next one. Okay. Like so. Push that down. Then the next thing. We will do our mushroom mousse. I'll spin that, spoon that on here. Covering the entire surface of the salmon. Okay. So now, we need to wrap this. So a good little trick when doing that is this. Is as your protein is laying this way, start off at one corner. Take a cut all the way out to the end, and then another one there. And taking out the four corners. Now that we have that done, we take the ends and fold them up, like so, and fold that end up. Now what I will do is I take some of my egg wash and brush the pastry on the sides here. And anywhere that the puff pastry is going to touch the other puff. And then when I fold that over this way, I might get a little more here, and then close it. Tuck in your corners a little bit. sheet pan lined with parchment, ready to go. We will then brush the entire exterior of it. There's no need to brush the bottom as the bottom is going to get brown anyway and the egg will stick and you definitely don't want that. It makes a mess. Now that we brushed over, 
I will then garnish. Feel free to garnish with anything you like. I'll add a little sea salt. And then maybe some peppercorns that are cracked. Fresh. And repeat that with the next one or any others that you want to make. there you have it. The salmon wellington is fully assembled, brushed with our egg, and garnished. Uh, on the left we have uh, sea salt and black pepper. To the right we have just a lattice fold with the uh, scrap pieces of the puff pastry and some sea salt. Our oven is preheated at 425 degrees. Put this in there for about 30 minutes or so. Well, the wellington is now out of the oven. We allowed it to rest for 10 minutes or so, just to let the proteins and everything settle, and ready for slicing. Uh, highly recommended to use a serrated edge knife, as it'll cut through the delicate pastry much better than a straight edge. So, what I like to do is the end piece, I kind of sacrifice it. That's our little snack. And then, I get to the main cut. Cut a nice thick piece, maybe an inch, inch and a half thick. And then you look like that. How the mousse solidified in there. The spinach is nicely, you know, packed in. And when I mentioned before about it being neater, and that's how nice and neat it looks when you get there. And now for our sauces. Uh, this is a relatively heavy dish, so I like to go with a much lighter sauce. On here, I chose a red pepper coulis and a yellow pepper coulis. Uh, a coulis is just a fancy name for a vegetable or fruit puree. You can serve it hot or cold, and these ones are happen to be emulsified with olive oil. I will have the recipe in the 
listings below. But to make it's really simple, uh, corn seed the peppers, add some shallots or onion, diced, saute with a little oil, add a little chicken stock, vegetable stock or water, cover it with a lid, simmer it for about 20 minutes until everything is cooked, and in a Vita Prep or a Vitamix variable speed blender, blend it high speed. Being careful to start with low speed because anytime you throw something hot into a blender, being it's under pressure, it will explode and end up all over your kitchen. And as it's pureeing, I add a little red wine vinegar into the red and a white wine or a Chardonnay vinegar into the yellow and then uh, drizzling olive oil into it, maybe mm, two tablespoons or so, just enough to emulsify and pull everything together. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's demonstration and look forward to hearing some of your comments. Below the video will be the recipe for the sauces as well as the step-by-step -step instruction for the Wellington. And as always, thank you very much for joining us. Yo et